is another beautiful morning here on E7. Uh, it is a little overcast again today. We did have a little bit of rain, but it didn't last very long. So, good to know. We moved our tent and hung out again here last night. It's been really nice to sleep out here and then uh, kind of rough it a little bit and then get up the next morning and just be able to to work and get stuff done. So let's take a look here. James is back there. He's already been up, of course, earlier than I am. He's uh, an early bird. I'm not so much. So he's back there though working. So let's go check it out and see what he's doing. So I have uh, made a jig for a template for these uh, pier sure. cages. And uh, so I just took some PVC, drilled some holes in it, put some zip ties in there to hold the PVC because I don't have any bands, which is what you typically would tie around piers, prevent rebar. So I am um, built, built this jig and then uh, tie it with wire. Once I get it all tight, um, where it's not going to come apart, separate or collapse, um, then I will slide this jig out from underneath it and pier cages can go right in the hole. We did get a few of the holes done for the pillars, so it's going um, almost four foot deep. James is making the rebarb post to go inside of there. So we've got all of our ends done. There's another one over there, but using this little dude right here, we rented it for the day, or I guess for the weekend. And then we go over here and we got these four done as well so we've got one over there two here and one there so each of the corners will have a concrete post that will hold them and then we'll do uh, cinders in through there Hey there, what you working on? Fix to make some concrete for our piers. What you got there? Some legs showing. <laughs> nice team. Nope. I am doing my math on uh, how much water to add per bag based off of how many bags or how much concrete we're using per. So. What do we have in here? We I don't have think we've got 100 gone. bags of 80 pound, 4,000 psi concrete. Four. Or 100 bags. That's 8,000 pounds. 8,000 pounds. All it's right. Early, so math is not. <laughs> math is not. You're already doing enough math, and you sprung that on me. Sorry, sorry. So I here's got, our I got two bags in our mixer. Okay. About to put some water in there and get to going. All right. So we've got. He dug the holes last night, or yesterday. They dug them out for. Four on each end. And it looks like this is the one he's about to start with. So. Alright, so we are mixing 80 pound bags of quick creep. They yield 0.6 cubic feet per bag, and this is a four cubic foot mixer drum. So I could put four bags in there, but right now we're gonna do two just to make sure controlling our yield, getting our mixture right, and then as we progress, proceed, we'll do maybe add three bags and then go to four. Uh, but you can see the, that's two bags in there mixing now. This beats doing it with the shovel in the wheelbarrow. But this is not as awesome as having a mixing tool.
it's slowly starting to spread around a little bit. There's the two things that were with this in it, so I can you can uh, there's there is room for additional water if you need if that makes up for a minute or so. See how it's starting to become liquefied? Yeah. You can see it. There we go. You know when you're a kid and you make Play-Doh? Yeah. If you watch it from the top when it falls, it looks like when you would push the, the Play-Doh through the hair thing. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Amanda thought... It's like it comes down in strips. It doesn't. It's just the way it looks. That back part looks like it, yeah. Warn me next time. Water. So what consistency are you looking for? Huh? What's the consistency you look for? Watch right behind you. Yeah. Um, really just, it's hard to say what you're looking at, but it's workability. Basically, I'm making sure that I've got a good, when I'm watching that barrel turn, I'm making sure I've got a good consistent rotation. I don't have any clumps, anything like that, but I don't have a lot of liquidy spots either. So um, that's kind of when if I was if we were putting this down on paving or something like that, um, really I'd almost be kind of looking for the same thing. You can do a slump, which is how much it'll hold. Um, it'll stand up on its own versus if it's got a lot of liquid to it, it's going to dissipate. You don't want that because then all your aggregates go to the bottom. Um, if it's too dry, then it's hard to work and it doesn't smooth out and it just really looks bad. So, but for what we're doing in piers. Adding the right amount of water, the exact amount of water to the amount of concrete, it'll be perfect. All right, let's see. Off to mix another bag? Yeah. Okay.
So number one got finished. Okay. Just like with any number one, you figure out what you want to do differently. Right, Jay? That's right. For the rest of them. Yep. That's the back corner. Just so. like those of us that have more than... Don't say that. There is an anchor plate in there with rebarb attached to help support the weight. So we are going to uh, start on the next one, make us some forms and keep going. All right, so from this view, it probably looks like not a lot got done today. We still have our pier holes over here that uh, need concrete, but on this end, we do have our four piers. So here and here, this part, the front two, will be the front of one container and these two will be the other side of the other container. So the reason why these are not concreted in yet is because we decided uh, to go ahead and drill everything while we had the auger. So make use of our time. How are you feeling about today? Uh, good. We had some highs and lows, but feel good. Okay. Still trying to still burn daylight. Tr still trying to burn daylight. All right. So the eight are dug over on the north end of the house, the eight holes, and four of the eight are concreted in. And then you'll notice we've got the eight over here. There's four over here. And then we've got the ones down there. So this all got drilled uh, out. James took care of that. Of course, you can see where we've done some more cutting down of the upper section. And then down here, not a lot of change. But um, we had some really low spots down in there that I kind of went through and with the bobcat just tried to smooth them out it still needs some work but we at least got that uh let's see we had some rocks over here at this tree we got those picked up and when I say rocks I mean like massive <laughs> rocks This area right in here had some more big rocks and dirt and debris, just things that we had picked up along the land and thrown in piles. So there was one right here and there was one over here by these trees. We still need to get the trees out and cut those, but uh, got those semi cleaned up and then Okay, got that area cleaned up a little bit. That was where when anybody's had any trash to burn, they've been bringing it out here and throwing it in this pile. And when I say anybody, we've got a buddy who did some work on his house. My son has done some work on his house. So it was just random burnable trash. So there was some cardboard in there, um, some pallets that were messed up some tubing things like that so we got all that cleaned up uh, kind of pushed around some dirt and made some made almost just a mess is what I did but I was trying to get that dirt and stuff kind of cleaned up and pushed down by the pond area so got that taken care of well I started that one got to take this tent down and get ready to go home soon but it appears as though James is doing what James does and he's trying something. So let's go see what he's got going on.